Spirit. Charlotte also has a powerful prophetic gifting, is an intercessor, and has a true heart of worship, which was very evident in the worship and praise the Lord. I love that. So Charlotte, if you come forth, you guys would uh, all give her a round of applause. Hallelujah. with surrendered hearts and lives with our hands raised high 
and one on our hearts saying, here we are, Lord. We belong to you completely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, it's amazing when you take the moment to really listen to the Lord. And I thought, see, that's usually what happens when you think, and it's not the Lord saying, I had a message. And so I said, all right, Lord, I got about half of it together, and then it didn't go anywhere else. And I thought, well, where are we going with this? I need a whole message, not just a half a message. And so about two and a half weeks ago, my husband had given a scripture in one of his messages, and actually he said it wasn't even in his notes. It just came out, so I know that was the Holy Ghost leading me. Yes. So he gave the scripture about, well done, that good and faithful servant. And I heard it, and as soon as I heard it, as quick as a snap of a finger, I heard the Lord say, what is a faithful servant? Amen. And I thought, oh, I don't know, Lord. He said, get a piece of paper and write. I'm going to tell you. And I said, oh, so real quick, I found this piece of paper <laughs> in my Bible. And I wrote it down really quick, really fast, because it came just like a snap of a finger. And I said, okay, Lord. He said, that's your message you're going to share at Women's of Globe. A faithful servant. A faithful servant. <laughs> Now, he just shared four things with me, and I'm sh there's many other, I'm sure, things that make a faithful servant. But those are the ones, this is what he dropped in my spirit immediately. And I said, okay, Lord, Matthew 25 talks about it with the talents. You know, you have five, he's given two and one. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And as soon as I read the last part of that verse, enter into the joy of the Lord. He said, read that again. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Come on. The joy of the Lord is only going to come forth as you are a faithful servant to him. It doesn't matter what you think or what you say. It is the faithfulness of God that will carry you through everything you face in life. And his joy is to be our strength, right? right? Yeah. Not our circumstances, <laughs> not our situations, right? It doesn't matter because when God is truly your, your strength wow. and yes. he's called you to be that faithful servant, Come on now. he's always faithful to us. Yes, he is. I said, Lord, thank you. I am going to enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Yes. That's good. He is, yes. not will be, he is. Yes my strength. That's right. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. He said, Charlotte, how diligent are you in investing as the ones in the story? Your time, your money, your gifts, your talents? That's what I've called you to do as a faithful servant. He said, those who serve me wholeheartedly I will reward you for your faithfulness. Right. I will reward you for your faithfulness. The unfaithful, hmm, well, let me tell you, they will not be treated the same as you, the faithful one. And sometimes people want to know, well, God, what happened? Where are you? How come? Why? There are times that Things get thrown your way at life, and then some of it is caused by us not standing and staying in that place of knees, praying, interceding, what he's called us to do, because he is faithful no matter what. That's right. That's right. That's right. The first thing that he shared with me, and actually the the main, because he said the rest of them follow, but you have to have this one's the main important one. Seek him wholeheartedly. Yep. Amen. Seek him wholeheartedly. He said, because those that don't come and seek my face wholeheartedly, and they come half-hearted into that place of, mm, well, 
What are you going to do for me, Lord? What are you going to do for me? Look at me. Look at me. What about me? What about me? As Joyce Meyer always says. But he says, no, really, what about me? Yes. I have called you to this place. Are you willing to pay the price and the sacrifice that comes with it? Come on. Because there is a price to pay. Yeah. That's right. And sacrifices will have to be made. Right. But as you seek him wholeheartedly, just as Second Chronicles, and we say that, I love that scripture, and I, you know, we read it how many times. But as I read it, getting this message together, there came a new, fresh revelation and a fresh light on the word of God. Who is the light, by the way? Second Chronicles 7, 14, 15. It's amazing, the very first word, if. Come on. If. Yeah. If, if, it's your choice, yep. free will, yeah. you choose, yep. if, he's not saying you have to, mm. if my people who are called by my name, no other name, right. no other name, no other name, Amen. Jesus, Jesus, will humble, 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 where are the humble people of God anymore? Come on. The only one that should ever be exalted in any place in our lives is yes. Christ. Yes. Let Christ be seen and ourselves not seen at all. You know, we always say, less of me, Lord, and more of you. He corrected me a couple of months ago about that, and he said, why do you want any of you? <laughs> You see how we just say things just because it sounds good or so-and-so said it over here at this prayer meeting or I saw that on TV. He said, no, no, if you're here to seek me wholeheartedly, it's you and me. It's not about what somebody else said or what you heard or what you saw. Come on. That's what a personal relationship is with your Lord and Savior. Yeah. He said, don't you think it's time, Charlotte, that we don't see any of you? Wow. Not a drop, not an ounce. Come on now. I believe that it should all be me and none of you. So why do you say less of me, Lord, and more of you? Well, that was a beautiful rebuke, and I'm grateful that he did that. Because I'm going to tell you what, my eyes were truly opened when he shared that with me. Because if it is all about him, then we can't stay in that place to where we leave everything lying here on the shoulders and we carry all oh, that right, right. with us. Oh, that holds yeah. us back from what he's really calling us to do. Because wow. it is all him and none of you. Yeah. If we could truly live out this verse, woo, what freedom we would have in the church. Yeah. Mm. Well, humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. See, if it's all about him and it's all him and none of you, then there won't be no wicked ways. Now, I'm not saying we're going to be sinless, perfect people. But I will tell you what, if you get to that place, you'll be real quick to want to repent and not fight with God about anything. And just say the two wonderful words, I'm sorry. How many times do we want our spouses to say that? Oh, but the Lord says many times I want to hear you say that. Mm. Okay, they're wicked ways. Then I will hear, then, then I will hear, then I will hear. Hello, we want him to hear, right? We're here seeking him wholeheartedly. Do you not want him to hear yeah. what you are yes. coming and bringing forth to him? Yes. From heaven. Mm. And will forgive their sin and heal their land. Ooh. We are in a desperate, desperate state. Yeah. Right. in our land of major yes. healing. Yes. But listen, church, it's got to come with us first. That's right. Who's supposed yes. to be the one interceding? That's right. That's right. It's us. Come it's on. us. Yeah. We wonder why we were, we are where we are today. Are we truly all doing our part? Because it's not one church, not one ministry, though we serve one God, yeah. but he has accounted every single one of us accountable to do our part. That's right. Yeah. And praying and seeking his face and interceding. 
for not just our families, but the nation, the country, the churches, the body of Christ. We are such in a state of slumber that, my goodness, what on earth that the breath of God can't raise you up? I don't know what can. We pray for the breath of God who is the one that brings life. Now my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to the prayers made in this place. Will our eyes be open? Will our ears be open? Not just in the natural realm, but in the spirit natural realm. Mm -hmm. As you seek him wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. watch your spiritual and your natural eyes open up and become one as well as your ears. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Actually, he's really called us to live out this verse on a daily basis, church. Mm -hmm. Every day. Right. Every day. Yes. Mm. If we would just be at a state that we would stay humble before him and on our knees, truly seeking him wholeheartedly with 100% him and none of us, the transformation in our minds and our hearts would become so one, we would be able to see the power. <laughs> Where is the power of the Holy Ghost in church anymore? That's right. Come on. Hmm. Hmm. The Lord's never left. He's the same. Has to be welcomed. Has to be wanted. Have yes. to open up to it. Yeah. To him. Mm. Keeping our hearts humble. Mm. So important. Of any sin. Anything that may try to even begin to creep in. If you stay humble before him in that state of praying on a daily basis and seeking his face wholeheartedly, I will tell you, I am that person. He will shine his light really bright in that area that needs to be released to him and popped out, pulled out. Seek him daily and let all of life's cares and worries go. Come on. True repentance. If we walk wow. what he's called us to walk with a true heart of repentance, not just talking. Those around you are going to see the changed behavior That's in right. your life. That's right. They're going to say, "Woo! what happened to so-and-so? You know, they used to do this, and they used to do that, and they used to have a, we used to call that the potty mouth, and this and that, and ooh, they're not like that. I mean, occasionally something might slip out here and there. But you will be able to see that transformation right. take place and that true repentant heart that God has called us to live on a daily basis, a lifestyle of it. A lifestyle of it. Mm. With a heart like that, the Lord said, how can I not hear your prayers that you are bringing forth to him on your family's behalf, the church's behalf, the nation's behalf, the country's behalf, your city's behalf? Yes. Sorry. How can he not? How can he not? Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Yes. Call upon him hmm, while he is near. Don't put up those barriers, those walls. When you put barriers and walls up, he's not able to truly come in and have his way. That's right. Those walls that we put up are walls of defense, of offense, of hurt, yep. disappointment. Listen, when we say all of him and none of us, don't carry it here. Don't carry it here. Release it to him and then watch it go. And once you release it to him, he will fill you back up with everything that you need. And that is him. Right. Not always easy to do, I know that. <laughs> Not always easy to do, but in those moments, let him stretch you. Yes. That's where the growth comes from. Right. That's where the growth of God comes from in those moments. Mm. He wants us to seek him daily, wholeheartedly, 
so that we can learn to be able to walk alongside him, not to get in front of him, not to be behind him. He's called us alongside of him. Right. You stay in that place to seek in him wholeheartedly, and he'll know how to pull you back or say, come on up here. What are you doing back there? That's right. You know, I was running, and this, this is for me. I was running this week, and that's where he speaks to me a lot. Actually, I got three fourths of my message when I was running. Oh, and Tuesday morning when I was running, I was just, talking to him and man he was just ch -ch 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 downloading I'm like oh Lord don't let me forget oh gosh that's good oh yeah I'm like he's like preaching to me I'm like yeah 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 that's good ouch Lord oh that really hurt and so as I was running I started picking up my pace because I wasn't paying attention and I started running out of breath and I said man I can't keep this pace up because I was getting into the glory realm there as I was running and all of a sudden he said oh you can't and I said no I said oh I gotta I gotta back off I don't think I'm going to make this last mile home. He said, well, I want to give you an illustration of what you're experiencing. I said, yes, Lord. He said, I've called you to run alongside of me, not after me. Don't keep chasing after me. Don't say I'm running after you, God. He said, I want you to learn to run alongside of me. If I pick up the pace, you pick up the pace. If I slow down, you slow down. If I stand still, you stand still. Wow. That was the big ouch on my toes. I thought I was doing really good. I said, Lord, I thank you. Because I'm always telling them, I'm running after you. I'm running after you. Lord, I'm chasing you today. I'm chasing you today. And when he gave me that fresh revelation, I said, Lord, no, I want to run alongside of you right. today. I want to yeah. run alongside yes. of you. Yes. Run alongside of you. Right here, hip to hip, side to side. I want to be so connected to you, I don't want to miss anything. Yes. That's right. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 7, 9. Oh, let us, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God tests the hearts and the minds. Wow. See, that's the part we don't like when we come to seek him wholeheartedly, because he'll test your heart. Yes. He's going to test, test your motives. Yes. He's going to test the intentions of it. Yep. What is it really for? Who is it really for? Did I tell you to do it? Did I tell you to go there? Did I call you there? Oh, but that looks good. And ooh, Lord, there's you know, I, you know, so and so do that. Should have. But did I call you? Come on. I didn't say about so and so. <laughs> In that time where you go to seek Him wholeheartedly, that's one on one, you and Him, right. and He will come and test your heart. And see what's truly inside it. And if your motives are pure and right. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Lord. Mm, number two. Hears his voice and obeys. Hears his voice and obeys. A faithful servant. A faithful servant. Will hear his voice and obey. It's so important. That we have an ear to hear what he is saying. Not what the enemy is saying. Who are you listening to? Not what you think are saying. The Lord says it's very important that you have an ear to hear my voice. And then to obey what I am telling you to do. Deuteronomy 30. 15 through 20. Mm. Life and death, life and death, so important. Mm. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land which you go to possess. It's so important that you hear his voice to have the blessed life that he has called you to have, yeah. and that you don't listen to the voice of the enemy who wants to come to steal, kill, and destroy, and rob, and take everything from you that the Lord has given you. 
But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear mm. and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in to possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life. And the length of your days. And that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them. Life and death. It's up to you. It is in the tongue. There is power in your words. There is power what comes forth out of you. The Lord had given me a vision years ago when I was praying. And he said, you know, you pray and you come and you do seek my face, but I don't believe you see the importance of what comes out of your mouth always and how you pray. He said, I want to show you something. And then he just took me into a vision. I was awake. And all of a sudden I was on this mountaintop and it was huge and it was beautiful. And the colors were absolutely gorgeous. It just looked like I was standing in a Thomas Kincaid picture. And I just can't, the, this beautiful, the colors were just, I can't describe them. It was just gorgeous. And all of a sudden, I was over on another part of this mountain. And I saw two silhouettes. I saw a dark silhouette and a light silhouette. And I saw hands behind, just, I could just see the figure, and toes on the edge of this mountain, and they were in position, crunched down, ready to go, ready to move. And I heard the Lord say, you need to know from this day forth the power that truly is in your words and what you speak and what you say. Because one of us is waiting to move on your behalf. Who's it going to be? Yeah. Remember that when you begin to speak and what you say. Because the Lord told me both are ready to move and you give the command by what you speak and what you say any moment, any second of the day. Wow. It's important to hear his voice yes. and obey it. And not to get caught up listening to the lies from the pit of hell. There's no truth. We know that. We say that. Father of lies. No truth in them. Why do we still believe them? Why do we still keep speaking them? Why do we still keep confessing them? Well, my dad has this disease. And because it's in the family. And, you know, they say. Thinking they can say all they want. Come on. But it's your choice and what you do with what they say. That's right. You know, my and my dad does actually, he has Crohn's disease. It was years ago. He got diagnosed with it. And so he called me on the phone, because that's what the doctor said. There's five of us children. And he said, I just need to let you know I've been diagnosed with Crohn's disease. It's very um to whatever, uh, it's, uh, hereditary. Hereditary. Thank you. That's the word. Thank you, honey. Hereditary. And I said, okay. And he said, so that means, you know, your brothers and you have a really high chance of having the same disease. And I said, oh, well, not me. And he was silent on the other end of the phone. And I said, dad. And he said, well, I just said it's you and your brothers. And I said, oh, no, it's not me. And he said, but you're not understanding. I said, no, I understand, but I'm just not listening. Yeah. I said, because the Lord told me that I have been cleansed in his blood and I have been washed and redeemed yeah. through the blood of Jesus, that no curse 
and no sickness and disease, that's a curse, is going to come upon me. Not this body. I said, I can't be speaking it and not believe it. He said, well, and he's not a believer. And he said, if that's what, you know, you want to say, I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. But I so appreciate you calling and letting me know. But I do not have Crohn's disease and will not have Crohn's right. disease. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So it's so important. I heard this instant because I'm listening to my dad and I heard the Lord say, I'm hearing his voice. Oh, are you accepting that? Huh? Are you not accepting that? Come on. Just because it's something that is hereditary and it's in the family, you don't have to accept it or receive it. And I didn't. And that was probably about 10 years ago. Thank you, Lord. Mm. What you hear and what you see and what you speak comes straight from the heart and that controls the mind. The Lord says, what you speak is what you believe. That's right. Isn't it amazing sometimes when people say something to you? Oh, I don't, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't need that. Yeah. And a few people oh. have said that before, and the Lord and the Holy Spirit quickened in me and said, Oh, yes, they do, because they wouldn't have said it. Come on. Ouch. What you speak is what you believe. Wow. Watch your words. Hmm. What you are hearing is what you're speaking, and what you hear. You speak, and what you speak, you believe. So it's important that you have an ear to hear the voice of the Lord and obey Him and what He's telling you to do. The fruit of your life shows those around you the one that you truly serve. The Word says that we are known by our fruit. And what comes forth and what you speak is your fruit. Mm. Mm. Number three, walks in faith and love. A faithful servant walks in faith and love. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, 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 diligently. Where is the diligently in the church today? Because every chair here should be full. Every chair in every church should be full. Now, I know people have to work. And I know, you know, some may be down, not feeling well. And life is life. And we know those things. But I hate to say majority could be in the church today somewhere or on a Sunday somewhere. Diligently. Yes. Lack of commitment. Lack of commitment. If you were truly committed and had the heart of God that no matter what, you are not going to miss out what he has for you. That's right. Diligently seek him. The Lord wants our faith and trust in him, even if we cannot figure things out. And what's going on? Mm -hmm. It's the unknown. And this is what he told me today. It's the unknown that we are called to walk in, and that's faith. Faith is the unknown. See, we always want to know everything, and we always want to have the answers, and we want everything, you know, and I'm the queen of that. Put all my ducks in a row, and let me have everything, you know, I'm a clean freak, and everything has to be just, you know, just right. Let me tell you, when you're those kind of people, the Lord likes to come and mess it all up every time without fail. Without fail, he will do it. Wow. I was like, okay, like today, you know, I got this finished at 9 a.m. this morning, and then I had to go to work at 10. So I'm like, Lord, I'm learning, though, now I'm not arrived by all means, but I'm learning. Okay, Lord, it's going to all come together when it comes together. And I'm not, you know, I used to stress, I used to freak out. My husband used to have to give me six months' notice to do a Sunday morning. I'm going to do I felt like, you know, one of those ADHD 
tea on, you know, crack or something personal. I don't know. I was just thinking, oh, I can't do this. Oh, God, I can't do this. No, you can't. Not at all. No, nope, not at all. Not at all. I can. But are you willing to allow me to use you? Because, again, it's all me and not a bit of you. Oh, love when he says things like that to you. Because then he holds you accountable for it. <laughs> okay, Lord. Thank you. Well, I'm still waiting for that it's, Sunday morning. I know. It's coming, honey. Maybe, maybe uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's always the grandkids. It's work. It's something. That, yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's, few weeks. it's It's coming. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's out there. Amen. Uh, it's out there in the nice wave air of the internet. I have a lot of accountability now. <laughs> Second Timothy 2.13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. If we are faithless, yes. how many times have we had those moments? <laughs> he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. That's right. Ooh, walks in faith and love. There was a time that this was an awesome testimony. My husband was going through a, a physical battle. Not that that was an awesome testimony, but how God showed up in it. Thank you. And I said, Lord, it had been, I don't know, how many months, honey? Three, four months. It was a long, it seemed like a long journey. Sometimes three or four months right now doesn't seem very long. But when you're in that yeah. journey and in that battle, yeah. it feels like three it's to so four long. years. Where yeah. are you, God? Where are you? Yeah. And wow. we weren't getting any answers. We had no insurance. We had no money. And it just, you know, blah, 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 like everybody else in life. And I was in my prayer time one morning. And just the Spirit of God just came on me just like, shoo, just like he just opened up heaven and just shoo, came down. Well, I was crying and just shaking and just, I mean, I was just snotting all over my floor. My dolls were laying next to me and they were just like, rawr, rawr, rawr. Like, who's wrong with her, you know? And turning their heads and whining. And I just, I probably had me a, I don't know, 35, 40 minute fit. I don't know. I was just so frustrated and angry and mad. I just couldn't understand. Where are you, God? I mean, I, I need like answers like a week ago, not like now. Like, they should have come up last week. Where were you last week? And so I went on about a 45 minute rampage and just, like I said, just crying, shaking, snotting all over the place. And all of a sudden, I, just left me and I felt okay. Nothing. Just I felt better. Mm -hmm. I sat there and <coughs> didn't hear from him and I thought, okay, because it's good to be silent so you can he can talk to you. Sometimes I like to talk too much and he's up there going, Psh. <laughs> you know, can I speak now? And so I said, oh, Okay, Lord, I just had to release it to you, so thank you. I did. I began to get out the word and I started reading some scripture. And all of a sudden, he said, then he begins to speak. And I'm like, oh, now you're going to talk to me because I'm getting in the word. But now you're going to talk to me. And he said, I just have one question for you, Charlotte. Will you still remain faithful to me? Will you still remain faithful to me? I said, well, Lord, what kind of question is that? Like, is this a trick question or something? And I said, no. I said, yes, Lord, I will always remain faithful to you. He said, that's all I need to know. That was it. Now, mind you, he still didn't answer my prayer, my question of what was going on. My husband's in severe pain, and I'm, I'm feeling his pain, and I'm interceding, and you're feeling, you're in intercession, you feel all that. The next day, our answer came, and our help came. And he got the surgery that he needed through a friend of a friend. Then my daughter worked with this doctor that got my husband in at VA that we didn't even know that he was eligible to have VA because he was, we thought he had to be a veteran in a war or something, not just four years or retired. And so we're like, wow, Lord, I'm like, you know, you could have done that like a week ago, but uh, thank you, months. you did it today. <laughs> but what he wanted to teach me was, no matter what I went through, no matter what I was facing, no matter the pain in my husband's physical body, was my faithfulness in him going to be moved or changed because of my circumstances? Yeah. Wow. And I said, no, Lord. I will remain faithful to you no matter what. 
no matter what. Hmm. He will always remain faithful to us, even when we are faithless. Remain faithful to him no matter what. Be determined in your heart to stay loyal to him. Stay loyal to the Lord. Keep bearing the fruit of faithfulness. He said, Charlotte, I want you to keep bearing the fruit of faithfulness. I said, thank you, Lord. Even when people speak against you, hmm. he said, I've still called you to love them. And I still called you to remain faithful to me, no matter what rises up against you. I've called you to walk in my love and to walk in my faith. It's my love and my faith I've placed inside of you. It's not yours. You will not be able to do it. It's mine. I've placed it inside of you. Not yours. Our faith grows by using it. A seed grows by sowing it. Our love grows by being it. I'm going to say that again. Our faith grows by using it. A seed grows by sowing it. Love grows by using it. Walk by faith and walk by love. And you know, he told me they go together. Because you can't pick and choose. Because faith works by love. Exactly. They're a pair for a reason. And they're a powerful pair. If you look in the world we live in today, it is lacking love and a desperate state. That's right. Everybody's continually looking for love in all the wrong places. When he is the only one that gives that unconditional, real, true love that our heart is longing for. Luke 18, 27. Things which are impossible with men, with impossible with men are possible with me, God. Yes. That's a faith walk. Think about that. Things which are impossible with men are possible with God. That is the definition of a faith walk. Something that you have no idea how it's going to work out and come forth. My children are complete miracles of God because by the doctors I was never to have any. I walked out that faith. The impossible came against me by man saying I would never be able to carry past 26 weeks. Lost my first at 26, but did not lose my last two. And God promised me. But medically, the way my body was built, I couldn't carry much past 26. But the doctors did nothing for me. And I had an atheist doctor at the Army Hospital in Texas. And can I tell you that he said out of his own mouth, by the time he delivered my child at 40 weeks, my second daughter, he said, I believe you will make me a believer. I believe you will make me a believer. Because he could not believe when he told me out of his own mouth, there's nothing I can do for you. Medically, you will not be able to carry children full term. And, of course, the enemy didn't stop there because then he wanted to pour that up to my daughter, my oldest one. And she was told the same thing, but different reasons. I had cervic issues. She had major endometriosis where she was just ate alive inside her. Two surgeries and not good. 25 years old, they wanted to do a complete hysterectomy on her. Not married and didn't even have a boyfriend. She said, Mom, my heart's desire is to have children and be a mom. I said, awesome, we're standing in agreement. It's going to happen. I said, the devil thought I wasn't going to have any children, but ain't no way the gates of hell did not prevail in my life. Did not and will not in yours. 
I said, so if that's your heart's desire, that is my heart's desire because I want to be a grandparent. Wow. So to this day, make a long story short, she has three children, one that is five, one that is three, three and a half, and a six-week-old little boy, two boys and a girl, Elijah, Emma Grace, and Isaiah. And they are all miracles of God. Yes. And can I tell you, when I went to that doctor's appointment and busted that doctor's bubble, when she said, oh, we got to do a hysterectomy, I sat there and went, uh-uh. And she looked at me and she said, we're going to have to do a hysterectomy. Because she turned her back to me because I wasn't the patient. And she said, well, Mom, what do you think? I said, nope. Come up with plan B, because plan A has a big old red X on it, because it ain't happening. And she looked at me, she said, well, I'm not your doctor. I said, no, but that's my child. And we're going to stand in agreement. I said, I'm going to tell you something, Dr. T. I said, God healed me, and he's going to heal my daughter. And she was speechless. So now when she's delivered two of the three, she cried both times, and she just shook her head. She's like, you're God. You're God. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I say, would you like to know my God? Because he really That's is a right. healer. Yeah. Not just a healer. Those are miracles. He performed yeah. miracles in my life. Yeah. There's no other explanation. It's the impossible. Right. There was no hope. We had every strike against us that could be against us. That's right. Hmm. But with God, all oh, things are possible. Right. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Give him your nothingness and watch him do a work in you and through you. He likes those places in our heart. I have, I have nothing here, God. I have nothing to give. Great. That's what I want. <laughs> then I can really use you. <laughs> and it's all going to be for me and about me and all the glory is going to go to me. That's right. Yes, Lord. Amen. Woo, thank you, Lord. All he needs from you is your faith in him, your love. In him, and he will do the rest. He will do the rest. Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, and do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spiritually or spitefully use you and persecute you. You know, when the Lord had me use this scripture, I said, oh, mm. Okay. That's a scripture that is going to take faith and love to walk out. He said, exactly. That's why I'm having you talk and preach on walking in faith and love. Because without my faith that I placed inside of you, without my love that I placed inside of you, you would not be able to walk out that scripture. It is easier said than done. And without the Lord, it cannot be done. Right. But that's what the Lord wants from each one of us. And when we do that and walk out that scripture, that's what it means for us to overcome evil with good. Right. And is that what <coughs> God has called us to do? Yeah. Yeah. He's called us to overcome evil with good. He's a good God. He is a good, good God. Amen. There's nothing in him but good. Yeah, that's right. And if he lives and dwells inside of you, there's nothing in you but good. Yeah. Number four. Hmm. This one I I love because I tell him this all the time. That my heart's desires would become one with his heart's desires. Amen. My heart's desires would become one with his heart's desires. That we would be so connected and so in tune with each other's desires of our hearts that we could truly be transformed together as one the way he has called us to. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy 5 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, your strength. 
It's the number one commandment. It's the greatest one. It's the one that he has called us all to. That is the desire of his heart. Is it your desire? Is it your heart's desire? Amen. That you would truly, truly love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with every part of your being? He created you to. He created you to. And then he had to throw this in. Hmm. Goes back up with that wonderful scripture there. <laughs> we talked about with our enemies. Oh, he's also said the next greatest one there is to love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love everyone around you. Love everyone around you. He said, just let my love drip off of you. Let it just ooze from the pores of your skin. You just, you may not, you brush up against someone that's talking about it against you. I can tell you what, I can walk in a room and you can tell when somebody, <laughs> and then you come in and they're like, I don't want to be by that person. I don't want to be around them. I, mm, it's like they're contagious. I'm like, yes, be contagious with his love. Let it be a contagious love. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Then you know that you're truly walking alongside him. I I have to chuckle because the Lord will do that to me a few times. And some, At the beginning, I used to think, gosh, why don't these people like me? Oh, I had a shower today. I had my perfume on today. And I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, what have I done? Have I said something or I have something in my teeth? And when the Lord finally said to me, he said, no. It's because when you seek my face and you come before me, you're asking me to let you be that vessel of my love that it just drips from your fingertips and it oozes from the pores of your skin. Well, those that don't want it to receive it or to walk in it, they don't want to be around you because they're bothered by it. I said, okay, that makes sense, Lord. Again, watch what you pray and what you speak because it does come to pass. Good and bad. Galatians 6.14 God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. He was crucified for so many reasons. Think about that. We're here today because of it. We preach the gospel because of it. Right. And on that cross, he took care of everything you will ever need. Every want and every desire was taken to that cross for each one of us. He's called us to glory only in the cross. Yeah. There will be no room for pride or pity. When we truly crucify our flesh and walk in what he has called us to walk in, and that is his glory, so that only he can and will be seen and not us. Let the cross be the only reason you even have a ministry. Let the cross be the only reason you have a ministry. The ministry is not for you. Amen. The yeah. ministry is for the cross. Yes. Amen. It is Thank for you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. I said, that's good, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> we are to daily pick up our cross, as the word says, and follow him. Because the world is so full of enticements out there. Oh my goodness, distractions after distractions. Discouragements, despairs, the woe is me. Yes. If you don't pick up your cross and crucify your flesh, you will fall right into the trap the enemy has laid before you. That's right. As we crucify our flesh, it should be a lifestyle of getting up every day, knowing today's a new day, and I come before you crucifying my flesh, letting myself die so that only the spirit of the living God can rise up within me to be seen today. 
seeking him first in everything that we do with a surrendered and a yielded heart is what he's called us to do on a daily basis. Everything, I'm going to say that again, that he has called us to do should be done in a surrendered and a yielded heart to him on a daily basis. That's, right. That's what the cross is all about. First right. Peter 1, 14 through 16. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as we, as he who called us or called you is holy. You also be holy in all <coughs> your conduct because it is written, I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. He is holy. He right. is holy. He has called us set apart a sanctified life for him. A holy life. That's right. A holy life. Where is the holiness of Christ in the church today and in our lives? Do you see any fruit of the holiness? Do we see the fruit of the cross? The cross? Holy. The blood? Holy. It's so important that we truly live a holy life. And it's not by our outward looks. This is where we're missing it. It's not by my hair color and my pants or my skirt to my ankles or my television or my makeup or my hair color or whatever. It is the heart, 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 heart. And this is what is wrong that the body of Christ is missing. Because they want to look on the outward appearance when the Lord is up there saying, Hello, 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 Preacher. where are my holy people? Do they know that it's the heart that I'm seeking? It's the heart that I'm desiring. It's the surrendering, the yielding of it. It's not in the way that you look. It's not in the way that you even talk. It is your heart. You know, sometimes the silence is so golden. <laughs> the people truly see the heart. They can feel the presence of God on you, knowing that you're yes. real, you're true, you're genuine. Mm -hmm. Holy, 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 holy. A faithful servant will be holy. Set apart. Set apart. Set apart. See, when we want to have one in and one out, there's no holiness in there. And so many of the church, that's what they're doing. It's time to awake and arise in these last days. Come on. We wonder why the enemy can come in and do what he can do to us. Give him a place. You're giving place. Exactly. You're giving him permission. The Lord said the same thing. I can only use someone that's open to me. The enemy is the same. He can only use someone that's open Ow. to him. That's good. Hmm. Keep yourselves holy in every way. As you keep yourself holy and faithful to him in every way, he will protect you from the seducing spirits when you're tired and you're hard-pressed. Mm, that's good. He said, Charlotte, I'll keep you from those seducing spirits when you're tired and you're hard-pressed. But it's my holiness that will protect you. But you have to choose to be holy. You have to choose to set yourself apart for me. We are a temple, a holy temple. We stand on holy ground. Let his holiness overtake you tonight, refresh you tonight. It's his heart's desire. To create in each one of us a clean, pure, holy heart. Amen. Set apart for him. 
with a faithful servant's heart, you will truly be more than a conqueror. That's right. He said, I want you to end with that. With a faithful servant's heart, you truly will be more than a conqueror. A faithful servant. A faithful servant. That's why he's called you. He has called you tonight a faithful servant. A faithful servant to seek him wholeheartedly. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Giving your all. Don't hold anything back. Let him pull up the roots within your heart that have been dug in so deep from even years ago. I was telling Pastor Teresa that a couple weeks ago, the Lord, during my running time, I'm telling you, I'm going to miss it when winter comes as I don't run outside in the winter. But I was running and he showed me this huge heart and I saw his hand and he was going down into the depths of the heart as deep as he could go and I saw him pulling out junk hearts. He said, these are deep, deep roots that it's time they come out and I break them off and fill them up with all of me. Yeah. Things that have been hidden, he said, I'm about to expose. Mm. So if you don't let me pull up that old ugly past, it's going to be exposed. Yep. I said, oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. And we had a lady that gave a testimony that same, I had that uh, vision on Saturday. She had an encounter with the Lord on Saturday night, and she experienced part of it. And then Sunday morning at our prayer time, the Lord came down and revealed the rest of it and took it out of her during our Sunday morning prayer before service. And so when she shared, I shared that testimony of what God had showed me in this vision, she said, can I testify, Pastor Charlotte, because that's just what God did for me today. And it was something when she was three or four years old, and she's in her 60s. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. I love it when he shows you something and you're not yeah. way too out there, but, you know, <laughs> and then it really does come to pass. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. A faithful <laughs> servant hears his voice and obeys him. A faithful servant walks in faith and love. A faithful servant desires the heart of God that both hearts become one. Your heart and his heart. It's so important. In our church months ago, he showed me a vision that there were two hearts. I remember, I don't know if this is probably showing my age now. We had the sewing cards. Does anybody remember that? When you had those sewing cards? <laughs> yeah, I'm showing my age. I saw two hearts like a sewing card. And I saw this yarn and this needle. And during our, our Monday night prayer, I saw the hand of God come down from heaven. And I saw him stitch these hearts together. I'm like, wow, that's awesome, Lord, that's cool. He said, that's my heart's desire that I'm wanting to do in the body of Christ with each one of my children. I want our hearts to be so knitted together and so touching as one that they couldn't be able to do anything without me or they wouldn't want to do anything without me. I said, oh, Lord, that's me. <laughs> I don't want to be anything else but so connected to you and only you. He said, that's my heart's desire. I began to pray that the body of Christ would desire me again in that way. That they would be so connected to me and so in tune with me. They would know when it was time to move, when it's time to stand still, when it's time to run, when it's time to get on your knees. Wow. In Psalms 46.10. I love that scripture. Be still and know that I'm God. And I saw it over here when I came in. The Lord had told me, he says, I want you to write down the word still. And I'm going to give you a definition of what that means in my word here. So I got a pen. I began to write. And he says, I want you to know. Be still. Have faith in me. And know that I'm God. Be still. Trust me. 
and know that I am God. Be still. Let my peace surround you and know that I am God. Be still and let my love fill you and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am the one and true only provider for you in every area of your life, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially, and know that I am God. And every time I read that scripture, it has a whole new meaning for me. <laughs> Be still and know that I am God. I don't know who that word is for, but I feel it in my spirit very strong. The Lord wants you to have faith in him. Trust him. Let his peace surround you. Let his love fill you. And know that he is the only one that will truly be able to provide for you in every area of your life. No questions asked. No trying to figure it out. No not understanding why and how come. Just be still before him. And know that he is God. He's your God. He's your God. That's right. It's personal. Personal. Your God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, Lord, we just praise you. We worship you. We love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for planting the seeds in our heart of your word tonight. A faithful servant. A faithful servant. I thank you for all the faithful servants here tonight. Yes. Lord, I thank you for every heart and life being touched and changed and transformed into what you have called them to be. Yes. Not the way they see themselves. Lord, let their eyes be open tonight to see what you see inside of them. Let their heart's desire be your heart's desire. Let them come before you seeking you wholeheartedly. Oh, Lord, I thank you for fine-tuning their hearing that they would hear you so clearly, even at a whisper. A still, small voice, so subtle within their heart and spirit that they would hear you and they would move with you. I thank you, Lord, for the faith that you have placed inside every single one of them. And let that faith arise tonight. Thank you for the love that you have poured into them. Let them be a vessel of your love that it would truly drip from the fingertips of their hands and it would ooze from the pores of their skin. I thank you, Jesus, that you are their heart's desire. You are their everything that they would ever need, want, and desire. I thank you that you are knitting their hearts together tonight as one with you, Jesus. And Lord, we just give you praise, we give you honor, we exalt you, we glorify you. You truly are the King of kings and the King of glory. You are our healer, our provider, our deliverer, our Prince of peace. We worship you, Holy One. Holy, holy are you, Lord. I thank you for the holy hearts that have been humbled by you tonight, Lord that are open and teachable, surrendered and yielded to you. Allowing your will and your way to be done in their lives tonight. Not even just tonight, Lord, for the rest of their lives. I thank you that you call them faithful. I thank you that you see them faithful. I thank you, Lord, for a new hunger, a new the Lord just pouring into those that are crying out for more and the hunger and the thirst that he is increasing. I thank you for a fresh passion and a fresh fire, Holy Spirit, to come down and pour inside of them tonight. Shine your light in their hearts. You see the wounded. Lord, you see the ones that have no hope, that are hopeless that you are the one that is their hope. You see the hurting. And Lord, I thank you, you heal and you mend the brokenhearted. I 
thank you, Jesus. It's your hand. It's your touch. It's your presence that we want to overwhelm us tonight. Overwhelm us in your presence. Overwhelm us in your presence. Take us into that holy of holies. Take us into that place that you have called us to. Oh, to your throne where we come and we truly worship you at your feet. We truly come and kiss your feet in worship. We come and we give you our all. We lay it at the altar. We give it all to you. We give it all to you. We give it all to you. Fill us up tonight, Lord. Fill us up tonight. Ooh, with a fresh touch and a fresh fire. Oh, burn within us, Lord. Burn within us, Lord. Burn within us. Cleanse us. Purify our hearts. Cleanse and purify our thoughts. Cleanse and purify what we see, what we hear, what we speak, what our hands touch, where our feet take us. Oh, come and cleanse and purify us this evening, Lord. We thank you that you are faithful. You are a faithful God. You are faithful. And Lord, we, we are your faithful servants. And we don't want you to have to look too hard to be able to find one, because here we are, Lord faithful to you. We serve a faithful God. We serve a good God. We serve an awesome God. Oh, we serve a healer. We serve a deliverer. We serve a prince of peace. Oh, we serve the one that pours joy into us that is truly the only joy that is our strength. We glorify you, Holy One. We exalt you, Holy One. We seek your face tonight, Holy One. Oh, we come and we seek you. We come and we seek you. We come and we seek you. We don't come to seek just your hand. We come and seek you. We come and seek you. We come and seek you. We come and seek you, Holy One.